Yo. Hey. Can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag. Hashtag. W-A-W. What a week. Yeah, yo. What a week. Week. Welcome to this extraordinary episode of Wow, What a Week. It's a tribute episode um, entirely dedicated to our now late, what, creative producer, Kuvesh, Kuvesh Mohan. And uh, we saw it fit that we dedicate this episode to Kuvesh as opposed to having a normal episode because that's how epic a guy he was. And we're also doing this so that you understand exactly how epic a guy he was. Um, you know, we could have done a normal episode and fed you the line, that's what he'd want us to do. But I think we must stop everything uh, just so that we can pick up this dude. But I need to explain to you guys um, why Kuvesh was a special guy to me. So I moved to Johannesburg in January 1995 uh, to study media studies after dropping out of law school. Did two years of law and my two years of law, I guess, helped me learn how to read basic contracts. So it was still a win. Anyway, so I arrived in Johannesburg, February, we start at um, Boston Media House, which at the time was at Boston City Campus in Orange Grove. And because it's a media school, you're in a class full of creatives, you're in a class full of weird people, you're in a class full of people who think out the box, you're in a class with people who color outside of the box and outside of the line. Um, And because I grew up and was raised in a somewhat conservative society, where you don't color outside the box. You can color outside the box, but you must still do things the way they expected. You must still go to school. You must be a lawyer. You must be a teacher. You must uh, be a doctor. You must, but you can't play records for a living. You know, that's the kind of society that raised me. And, you know, that's one of the reasons I figured I need to pack my bags. I need to leave because my dream was clear. My journey was clear. Anyway, so in class, you know, as discussions happen, you start seeing the kind of people that think like you. You start seeing people that are wired like you. You start finding your tribe. You start finding people that share weirdness with you. And for me, Kuvesh was that guy. So he's probably the first friend I made um, when I moved to Johannesburg because we had the same passions. We loved Star Wars. We still respected Star Trek, despite the fact that we loved Star Wars. You know, we were, we'd, we'd geek out over things like, you know, movies like Wayne's World, movies like Ferris Bueller's Day Off, um, Dumb and Dumber. Um, um, geez, uh, what else did we geek out over at the time? Beavers and Butthead uh, was huge on MTV. You know, sometimes we'd sit on the rooftop at Boston and just speak like Beavers and Butthead, have an entire conversation speaking like Beavers and Butthead. That's the kind of weird we were. And I think that's what drew us to one another. But I think one thing I appreciated about this dude is the fact that he was always helpful. He always paid attention. He knew exactly what everyone was going through because he paid attention. If, for instance, one of the girls in the group would tell him that, you know, I went jogging today and I think someone was following me. Um, The following week, he comes to you with a gift, pepper spray, because he was a solutions-based kind of guy. So whatever you complained about, he never forgot. And you always came back with a solution. That's the kind of guy that um, Kuvesh was. I mean, I remember, obviously, moving to Johannesburg, I have to learn my way around the city. And we did a radio course at Solid Gold FM um, in my first year at Boston Media House. And our school is in Orange Grove. Solid Gold FM is in Randburg. I'm living in Parktown. 
So I remember, so the course happened every Saturday. So we'd take taxis to campus and then we'd ride with our lecturers to the radio course. And I remember saying to Kuvesh, listen, I need to go to Solid Gold. I've never taken a taxi to Randberg um, from Orange Grove. So he's like, oh, no, don't worry, I'll, I'll go with you. Um, he cancelled his plans uh, because this is after school, this is after hours. And he's like, no, let's go. We got into a taxi, went to Alex. So I was like, how does this Indian dude even know to take a taxi to Alex? Anyway, get into a taxi, we get to Alex. From Alexandra, we take a taxi to Rheinberg. And then from the Rheinberg taxi rank, we walk to uh, the Standard Bank building where Solid Gold FM was. And that's just the kind of guy he was. If you had a problem, he'd have a solution for you. Um, I remember there was another time, one of the kids in our group um, was from um, Westbury. And if you know Westbury, you'll know that it's a very gang-ridden, uh, colored community. And one of our classmates was from Westbury. And there was a week he didn't come to college because one of the gangs wanted him. So he couldn't move. The following week, um, said guy, I can't mention names to protect the innocent, arrives on campus. And I mean, we knew what the story was. We knew that he was a wanted man by one of the gangs in Westbury. And I remember Kuvesh offered to go back to Westbury with him um, the day he came back to college, just to, you know, give him a safety in numbers feeling. Whatever that meant. I mean, Kuvesh was the, the gentlest guy. I don't know what would have happened if someone had pulled out a gun. Like, what was he going to do, you know? Anyway, and he says they walk into Westbury. They take the taxi to Joburg and then from Joburg to Westbury. And when they arrive in Westbury, they go to some shop. So he thinks, no, we're just going to a shop to get stuff. He says he realizes later that this dude was meeting a guy at the corner of the store to buy a gun so he can protect himself. And, but he still waited with them. He still waited with them. He's like, listen, I'm, I'm in this deep anyway. So what's the worst that could happen? But I'm telling you the story to illustrate the kind of guy Kuvesh was. He would show up for you regardless of what the issue is. Kuvesh is the kind of guy, if you said, we're going to war tomorrow, we arrive at 6 a.m., he'd say, okay, I'll see you at 6 a.m. He'll ask you later, so who are we fighting and why are we fighting? You know, that's the kind of guy he was. That's the kind of care he had for every single person in his life and in his circle. And I think one of the other reasons he held a very special place in my heart is because between leaving high school when I was 17 and relocating to Johannesburg when I was 20, 21, I kind of lost touch with rock music, with alternative as it became known, and with pop music. So as we were starting Boston Radio in 1995, because he always had a Walkman on, he literally reintroduced me to that world of the other side of house music, the other side of dance music, the other side um, of Kwaito. And I've always said to him that one of the reasons my moving to 5FM from YFM was easy was one, because a lot of the kind of music 5FM was playing is what I used to play at school discos in high school. But a lot of it is also artists you introduced me to on your little Walkman. You always had a Walkman and, and earphones on, like without fail. I'm surprised he stopped because he was always the kid with the Walkman and the bomber jacket. Anyway, so <clears throat> life happens. We finish college. I go to YFM. He lectures, I think, at the London International School of Fashion. And, you know, life happened. And then when I moved to 5FM, I remember I needed a second producer for my show. And something in my mind said, no, man, but one of the guys that gets me one of the guys that understands how I think, 
one of the guys who's literally wired like I am is not a part of my team. So I call Kuvesh, I'm like, my dude, where are you? Um, we ride tomorrow morning at six. And, you know, as fate would have it, he was ready to ride. He became a part of my 5FM team and he took to it like a fish to water. I mean, he'd never produced a radio show before, but because it's content and he was a content guy before content was a thing, uh, he was ready to, to rock and roll. And he became part and parcel of my radio show at 5FM. Uh, when I moved to Metro FM, I was like, dude, we're moving. He became a part of my show at Metro. And in fact, when he became a part of my show at Metro, I had to fight for him because at some stage while we were at five, he was offered a job at another broadcaster, but it didn't quite work out. But I remember him coming to me, he's like, listen, I have a great opportunity to work on another radio show. Would you be fine with me doing it? I told him, no, dude, you must go. Because I don't believe in stifling people's growth. If you want to grow, you must grow. Um, I'd rather you go out there, grow, and you know, be the best version of yourself than feel like, ish, I missed out on an opportunity. So when we moved to Metro, I told him that, listen, dude, we, we need to do this again. Um, we need to rock and roll and, and, and make great content. So a lot of the content you might have heard on my radio shows is easily stuff that he researched or stuff he came up with or punchlines he came up with. So as much as I had a show producer, I'd always tell him that I want him to also do a prep sheet. So every radio show was prepped by my producer and there was also Kuvesh prep. And more often than not, I used his prep because he got me because we're wired the same. He understood exactly what makes me laugh, what makes me cry, what pisses me off, which buttons to press to elicit what emotion. And, and I think we all need a person like that if you want someone to bring the best out of you in the media space. And I think he was that for me. I remember 2012 when we were doing Bikers for Mandela Day. And we're riding through the Eastern Cape. And on that day, it was Nelson Mandela's birthday. So on that day, we were going to ride into his home village of Kunu. But before we ride, uh, Zelda, who was uh, Madiba's PA, um, right up until, um, Zelda says to me, oh, by the way, Bill Clinton is going to also be at the birthday celebrations with his daughter Chelsea. And I need you to be the MC at this event. I need you to introduce everyone, the proceedings, take over the protocol, and to introduce uh, President Bill Clinton. I'm about to get on a bike. I don't have time to prepare anything. So what do I do? I pick up the phone, I call Kuvesh. I'm like, my dude, in two hours, I'm gonna get off my bike, straight onto a microphone and introduce Madiba's birthday event uh, for Nelson Mandela Day and introduce Bill Clinton. So after we had a little geek moment about Bill Clinton and joking about whether we include Monica Lewinsky in the, in the speech, um, I got on my bike and we rode. Got off our bikes in Kunu and we did the event for the day with the Clintons and then after that, we got to the formalities. And because he got me, um, the speech he'd written for me had all the elements I needed for a speech. Uh, the protocol sorted, the humor sorted, the serious stuff sorted, the useless facts, because we loved useless facts. Um, in fact, we were, we were a well of useless facts before there was Google. Uh, that days we'd sit on that rooftop uh, on campus and just have a conversation about useless facts. In fact, we'd often wanna outdo chappies with did you know because of the amount of facts we had swimming in our heads. So yeah, just the right amount of useless facts um, in my speech 
like I said, because he caught me. He understood exactly what makes me tick. He understood exactly what I need in a speech. And it went off without a hitch. I remember Bill Clinton half the time uh, giggling his white head ass off. Um, and, you know, in my mind, I was like, yeah, my dude came through for me because my dude got me. Anyway, fast forward to... Then I moved to 947 um, after my fallout with the SABC and Metro FM. And because Kuvesh could not join me at 947 because they already had a producer for my show, I told him that we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to pay you and you're going to do prep for my show every day. And again, more often than not, uh, the prep I used was his prep for my radio show because he got me. He understood exactly what buttons to push. He understood exactly what content I felt needed to go out there. Um, so that was, that was the nature of our relationship. So the 947 Rodeo ended and then we started my podcast last year, February. And the first thing I did was, I'm not doing this without this dude. So I picked up the phone and I called him. He's like, dude, we have a podcast we're working on. We're going to record a pilot. So he's like, when are we doing this? I'm like, we're going to record the pilot next week. He's like, okay, what do you need from me? I was like, this is exactly what I need. And um, we'll be recording once a week. And I need you to come in once a week when we record. And that's what we did. And episode one was so dope. Also due to the fact that he'd done his role, he'd done the research, uh, he'd creatively come up with whatever he needed to come up with. We decided to film and screen our debut show the same week because we were happy with the product and we figured, listen, we are jumping off a cliff and we're going to build the parachute as we, as we move. Hi, my name is Catherine Grenfell and I worked with Kavesh for many, many years on The Fresh Drive, which was probably um, the best, best radio show that ever came out of South Africa. I can actually say that confidently. And we were a truly amazing team. And Kavesh was an integral part of that team. And um, one of the memories that I have is that while I was on The Fresh Drive, I um, had a baby, a little girl called Holly. and. Um, I was freelancer, we were all freelancers, and so I didn't get maternity leave, and so I arrived at the studio with this little baby and would leave her lying in the, in the production room with Kavesh and while I did the traffic or chatted on air. And honestly, he became a parent overnight, and I would often <laughs> turn around and look through the glass with Kavesh standing there. When I say, I mean, he has big eyes, but uh, he had big eyes. But when I say he had even bigger eyes holding this baby, waiting for me to finish. And um, he did it like an absolute champ. Um, he really was an integral part of our lives. Um, and, and he never, ever failed to message um, and I know this has been said so many times, but it is truly incredible. He would, you know, I would post something on Instagram about the kids, their birthdays, and he would message me and tell me how old I was making him feel every single time. And he would message for their birthdays. He would message um, for my birthday. He would message for Mother's Day and 100% never missed messaging me like an uber nerd to tell me happy May 4th and um, may the 4th and force be with you. Hi, my name is Brian Olson. Where I met Kuvesh, uh, it was actually on a public holiday. I started at five in 2012 and I started on the 1st of May, which was probably a blessing in disguise because I was really, really nervous that day. Uh, and Kuvesh was one of the first people that I met uh, and I can imagine 
on those particular days, uh, you know, the show was a lot more calmer. Uh, so he was a lot more calmer. So I think it was a blessing in disguise. So we just had like a, a chat. He asked me where I'm from, who I am, uh, why I joined Five. So it really made me feel comfortable. And I think that was just the nature of how he was. And he was cracking a couple of jokes. And, I, and also, I wasn't sure if he was being serious with some of the stuff that he was saying. Uh, but because I was so nervous and he, he recognized that I was a little bit, you know, obviously uh, nervous with the new environment, new job, he made me feel really, really comfortable. And we started talking about Star Wars. Uh, I'm a big Star Wars fan and I think he appreciated that. So we just like kicked off uh, really well in the beginning because we started talking about Star Wars and our favorite characters and our favorite scenes and it and it's been it's been that for the mo for the most part that's been our life uh our friendship because you know often when it comes to star wars when it comes to you know celebrating star wars day he would always send a message consistently saying hey uh dude happy star wars day and i think that's one of the things that i'm going to miss about Koresh the most is that he would always make sure that he would reach out to you and then you know just make you feel so special he always like sent a, a message and you know made made me feel very special you know, especially knowing that you know that there is someone outside of my immediate family that was thinking of me on that day so rest in peace Kvesh Hi, Kvesh, uh, brother man. Uh, whenever you are being a guiding angel to us, um, I hope you rest in eternal peace. With a hardly two years since brother DJ Fresh Tato Sibwani introduced me to you and to the podcast the World Wide Week and uh, your, your instant departure has actually left most of us, especially myself, in a shock. And I was saying to people, the show will never be the same ever again. Uh, the nights we had spent together, you know, uh, producing the show, talking and arguing about the topics to cover for the week, your love for the Palestinians, as well as your need for peace in Palestine. And, and we managed to use the show to filter that message to the people. Whenever DJ Fresh will scream, creative producer, Kuvesh Mohan, and people did not know that me and Fresh will look smart, we're informed, especially on geopolitics and the happiness in the country, with beautiful quotations, all because of you. The morning that you fell, we had a conversation on WhatsApp as I was driving to the studio. And your last message to me was, we've never been prepared like this and you think we'll have the better show than ever. Sadly, you didn't know that the feedback we received was that it was one of the best shows we've ever had, yet you were fighting for your life when the production went through. And for that, I'll be forever and ever thankful, Kubesh. Uh, continue to be our guiding angel, and I'll be forever thankful to Fresh for introducing me to a brother that I never knew existed. Your love for this country, your love for the people of the world, and your love for peace. Your creative skills made us indeed to look smart and good. You'll be missed, brother man. You'll be missed. And as I've said at the beginning, I do not think hashtag politics will ever be the same without you. I however promised myself that I will continue to strive for the best, to share information, to inform the public and the nation, and do what we use to do good. Rest in eternal peace, brother man. Rest in eternal peace. Thanks, Kovesh. Hi there, everyone, and many thanks for taking the time to watch this tribute to our dear friend and brother, Kovesh Mohan. My association with Kavesh stands a period of approximately 35 years. We grew up in each other's home and developed a bond that became sacred. Kavesh studied for a Bachelor of Arts degree at the University of Rajasthan 
And in the years that followed, he transferred to the Buddhist Spring City campus to complete his studies in media and associated faculties, which he successfully did. Suresh was just not a brother. He was that structure of your life that defined the very true nature of being there as a friend. He never wanted what others wanted, always content with what he had. He made his friends and family the pivot of his life. Those who encountered Suresh know the caliber of person he was, never judging, never refusing, and always accepting. He gave unconditional support to all those in his life. He most certainly passed on the attributes of community and the importance of being true to oneself. He never compromised his integrity, not for all the materialism in the world. His humility and attributes made him a very easy person to love. We are all born with faults, but Kuresh knew how not to let those faults control him, and he preached that to others as well. He was by far one of the most intelligent individuals I have ever known. His command of the English language and his general knowledge was super fantastic. Sim simply put, he was our guru. If you needed to know anything, just give Kuresh a call and you would be entertained by coherent and fascinating explanations. To put it simply, Kuresh lived life on his own terms. By being compassionate, honest, dignified, displaying a great sense of pride and decency, beauty bound, and had a fantastic sense of humor. He was appreciative of all those around him, and most importantly, he cared with the utmost of faith. Thank you, Kumesh. Take care, brother. All the best. Hey guys, Duran here. Um, so I met Kuvesh, I think it was around 2010. I can't remember exact year, but I remember a World Cup. And... Um, Owen Honey was really in sports at the time and he had to go and cover the World Cup stuff for, I think it was for Super Sport. Sorry, I'm in Benoni, so the guys are doing racing here with their cars. Um, and I remember when I first arrived into the, into studio, he was so welcoming and he was like, Hey, it's so good to have you on the show. And we've been, I've been listening to you on, um, the weekend breakfast with Ilana Africa and Mark Gilman was still doing like inserts on the show. I just remember how welcoming he was. And, and I've always said, um, there's two people that I've always had this like admiration for. Fresh is one and Kavesh the other. They have just got this like magnetic presence. You just gravitate towards them. And I just remember how cool he was. And my fondest memory, obviously I was in for a good two weeks because Owen was like doing, you know, covering the World Cup and he had to go to the matches and stuff. And so I would kind of chat to Kavesh daily and I remember one day he was so excited because something was happening with Star Wars and this new release or something. And I, and he was going on and, yo, man, he was giving me like all these details and when it's coming out and it's going to have this and that and lightsabers and all kinds of things. And then I think eventually he could see like my face. I mean, I had no idea what he was talking about. And I just remember him, he was like mid-sentence and he was like, you know what, bro? Don't worry about it. And he walked off. I was like, I'm so sorry, man. I don't know, Star Trek or he's like Star Wars. And I was like, okay, cool. Sorry, my bad. Um, and funny enough, now working with Salsi Chilun, we always play on the May the May the Voice be with you. And uh, every time we, we, we do a little GIF or a, a social media post, we actually, I would always send it to him, you know, and you'd always get a, a kick out of that. And he would always say, shop, bro. Um, but yeah, um, Kavesh, gonna miss you so much. Um, what a what an incredible person. Um, just heart of gold, down to earth, salt salt of the earth, humble, humble beyond any measures. I mean, you would never even know that he was that he was with all these big shows and personalities. Um, that, that wasn't that wasn't something that he bragged about. Um, you wouldn't even know. But let me tell you, ninety percent of that content and those skits and stuff. Um, obviously, it was a team effort, but. Um, a lot of it came from him. Sharp mind, just such a such an intelligent person. Gonna miss you. Um, yeah, Kavish. Will always be thinking of you, man. Fresh drive. Best years of my life when I eventually joined that show. Um, five of them was one thing. Working on the fresh drive was another. Peace. Hi, my name's Lisa. I know Kavish from Five of Them. Um, 
I think one of the key things you're going to hear that everyone says about Kvesh, especially those who work with him, is that he was always kind and always thinking about everyone. And he strangely also used to look out for you when you didn't know somebody was like watching over you. Um, one of my favorite memories of him was um, so whenever it is somebody's birthday, we send an email out with everyone uh, copied on the email and we wish that person happy birthday and then everybody sends their best wishes for that person. And on the one birthday, it was Justin's birthday and Justin is an Arsenal fan. So Kvesh took it upon himself to make his own personalized Arsenal picture for um, Justin. And I'm not going to say what it was. Uh, if you know Kavesh and his sense of humor, you can kind of figure out what he did. But it was actually a very hilarious picture and he shared it with everybody in the email and everyone laughed and thought it was great. And I loved it so much that I printed out the picture and I have it pasted on my wall there at 5FM with all the other cool memories I made with everyone. But um, one of my fondest memory of Kavesh is that when my father passed away um, and I came back from compassionate leave, I found a present on my desk and it just said from Kavesh. And when I opened the present up, it was actually a photo frame. So I was a little bit confused because he didn't say what it was for. And so I waited for him to come later because that time he was on the Fresh Drive show. So he would have come like around two o'clock. Uh, to the studio and stuff like that so I waited till the afternoon and when I saw him I said hey I got the picture I'm, I got the gift thank you so much uh, I'm not sure uh, why you're giving me a photo frame and then he said no it's for you to remember your dad whatever memory you have of him whether it's the favorite photo of him or a saying that he always says whatever it is just frame it and keep it with you and I thought that was very sweet of him and that's what Kavesh was. He was always doing random acts of kindness and I think that is something that everyone will remember Kavesh for. So rest in peace Kavesh, sorry I couldn't be there for your funeral but I am thinking about you and your family. Thanks, bye. Because of the kind of guy Kavesh was, because he gave, he gave a damn about everyone. Despite the fact that we'd record on a Wednesday or a Thursday from 9 a.m. till midday, and in those three hours, he's in his screen doing the work he needs to do. If we need to come, if there's a campaign for a client, he's taking care of that, making sure that we're included in the content. He still managed to impact every single person at Amp Studios. I remember Slim from Amp Studios saying, actually, the other day, I was asking Kuvesh, why is it that whenever we're done shooting, you go to every single person in studio, you look them in the eye and you say goodbye? Because he does that, he's, th he's that kind of guy. The way I walk into a room and I greet every single person, because I choose to acknowledge everyone in the room. He's the same guy, but at the end of the room. So he'd say goodbye to everyone. And Slim asked him, but why do you, why do, you do that? And he said to Slim that I didn't say goodbye to a friend of mine once because I thought I'd see them tomorrow. And that tomorrow never happened because your life can be on in one minute and off the very next minute. That is why I say goodbye to every single person and I look them in the face and I say goodbye. And little did we know that when he did that last week, he was actually saying goodbye for the last time. Um, because he collapsed at work on Wednesday, by Thursday he, he was gone. Um, and, and the reason I'm telling you these stories, and for instance, I'll give an example about how dude paid attention. Every single one of my kids, he knows their birthdays. 
So every single birthday of every single one of my kid, in the morning, he will text, um, happy birthday to Tato, please send him my regards. Happy birthday to Wandi, please send him my regards. Happy birthday to Lifika. Lifika is born on the 4th uh, of May, uh, Star Wars Day. Uh, so to us, it's epic uh, that I've got a child born on Star Wars Day. So on Star Wars Day, he'll send me a picture of Darth Vader and uh, may the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with Lifika on his birthday. That's the kind of dude he was. Every single birthday of every single one of my kids for the past 21 years, he has never forgotten. Even my marriage and wedding anniversary, he never forgets. And every single person this dude has encountered will tell you that on your birthday, you'll get a message. And every week, every two weeks, you'll get a message checking up on you. Just checking up on you, how you doing? Just checking up on you, how you doing? Every single week without fail, this guy does this. I've known him for 30 years. And, and, and you know, his life would have it. A lot of us get a message, but we don't necessarily respond immediately. We, I don't know, think, okay, I'll respond tomorrow because life is happening. I'll respond next week. And then next week doesn't happen. Uh, tomorrow doesn't happen because life happens. And then next thing you know, someone is gone. And I think a lot of us that got messages from Kuvesh last week but didn't respond thought we had another week or we had another month. And unfortunately, we don't. And one of the reasons we're dedicating a show to Kuvesh is because he gave a damn. He impacted a lot of us in his own special way. I mean, he had his own challenges in his life right from losing his dad when he was four years old to his very last day on earth. He dealt with so many different challenges, but he was still the happiest guy in the room. He was still the guy in the room that made sure everyone is okay. Do you want water? Would you like a coffee? Would you like a mint? And because his bag had everything, I always called his bag uh, the corner shop. If you have a headache, he's got a grandpa in there. If you're feeling nauseous, he's got something that will help with your nausea. So I always said to him, you've let down the Indian community because you should have a shop, not a bag full of everything. You should be selling all of this shit. And we'd always laugh about it. And um, like I said, the reason I'm telling you all of these stories is because my challenge to every single one of you watching this, especially if you experienced a Kuvesh kind of kindness is that if every single one of us practiced a Kuvesh kind of kindness, maybe the world would be a better place. Maybe our lives would be better. Maybe the lives of people around us would be better. If you simply checked up on the people you love, if you simply gave a damn, you'd be amazed at how many lives you can touch without spending a cent, you know, without having to leave the comfort of your home. Just give a damn and watch how many people's lives you touch. So to my dude, um, I'm sad you're gone. Last week, when we rushed you to hospital, as we were recording the episode with uh, DJ Sabi, um, Sabi asked me when I'm back on radio. And I remember as I told Sabi, I'll be back on radio in April next year. Um, my manager, Kelly, so was light, uh, a face lit up because I didn't even told her yet. Because the point was for both of you to find out on the podcast at the same time that in April we ride again. And the tough thing for me now is to find another riding partner. That is the tough part for me. That we ride at dawn in April and you're not there to ride with me. And for me, that's just, it's criminal, it's unfair, it's, it's, I'm not going to say I'm mad at God right now, but I'll have my own little private conversation with him, you know? And, and I think because life does have to go on and we have to carry on with this wow journey, again, I'm riding next week without you. And for me, that's not right. It's problematic. It is not going to be easy to find someone who gets me, someone who knows exactly 
what I need, someone who knows what buttons to press to get what response from me and within me so that I can function optimally when I do whatever show I'm doing. So my dude, rest in peace. Um, your legacy is in every single life that you've touched. Your legacy is in how much you cared about everyone around you. And we will make sure that that legacy lives on by practicing a Kuvesh kind of kindness. Rest in peace, my dude. Till we meet again when we do that massive radio show, wherever we go and we leave. Maybe there's no heaven or hell. Maybe we just live in a radio somewhere. But um, yeah, till we, we meet again, my dude. Uh, rest in peace and um, stay giving a damn. You're now one of my ancestors. So I'm going to watch you work. And work, I know you will. Because you get me. And you know exactly what I want. Thank you for watching this uh, Kuvesh uh, tribute. We'll be back with the regular programming next week. And please remember to practice uh, Kuvesh kind of kindness. Give a damn.